Hello everyone and welcome back to the 151st episode of the Top 5 Weekly. Now for those of you that are new here, this is a series where I take a look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam, analyze each one of the creations, discover the features and test them out here in Stormworks. But before we get started, if you are enjoying the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe button and while watching, let me know your thoughts of the creations in the comments below. So all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this week's episode. And kicking this week's episode off for the first creation, we have the Russian Hanging Birch. Uh, yeah, you heard that right. Uh, this is a birch tree that someone has built here in Stormworks. So let's go and spawn in and see what it is. And spawning in the creation, I mean, yeah, this is definitely a tree. <laughs> it's massive though. I mean, it is quite big. Okay, so it looks like the creator has used just regular, yeah, just regular one by one blocks. Uh, it's great. This kind of reminds me of, of Minecraft. The design of it using like no wages or anything definitely got Minecraft vibes here. Now we're going to go and have a little fly around inside and see if, uh, is there anything really? I think there isn't. I think it's just, yeah, it's just, 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 just a tree. Alrighty. I mean, I guess you could play, put a few of these down and create some, some really cool landscapes as type of an add-on. The only thing is that because of its shape and using the the blocks like this, it does create a little bit of a physics issue uh, for Stormworks. We all know that Stormworks is not the greatest when it comes to physics. Uh, so if we were to go and switch over to, yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot of physics there, isn't there? But I mean, hey, you know, it's working perfectly fine for me and it's really cool. I love the design of this uh, and it's unique. I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually make a, a full, tree like this before i could be wrong but yeah i haven't seen anyone really do that so yeah lovely little creation uh let's go and move on to the next one for the episode and moving on to the next creation of the episode we have the mini maru this is a attack submarine that is specifically designed for anti-shipping now it's got torpedoes that you can fire frontwards uh and that's pretty much about it but it looks like it's really detailed and looks absolutely beautiful from the workshop so let's go and spawn it and see how it works and spawning in the next creation, a nice looking submarine. I really think the creator has made use of the rope anchors uh, and the ropes just to make it look really cool. I mean, if you have a look from this side, I mean, look at the look of that. Uh, the detailing under the water line is actually really good. I mean, if we bring this up on land, it will even look better. But I mean, wow, really nice detailing on this one. I love the shape of the hull, as you can see from under the water. We've got propellers here at the back really quite nice all right let's go and jump on this and see what happens and how it works so up in the front here uh looks like we have got a four deck okay carry on along the edge nothing else really at the back here we do have a hatch for the coning tower carry on down nothing really else around here and that's pretty much about it now a couple things i have noticed it does look like there is uh, an air filter here so i'm guessing this is where you would get the air and these probably can extend because they're pistons uh, and that way you can get air while you're underwater. Let's go into the coning tunnel and let's see what we have in here. So jumping straight in here, it looks like we have, do we have anything for lights? No, okay. So this would allow you in theory to flood this and then empty it if you want to do diving underwater. Uh, and if you are above the surface, you can just come into the top here. Uh, and there's not really much in here, if I'm correct. It's just got, yeah, so steer torpedoes. That's interesting. Uh, we've got radio, we've got binocs, and looks like a big camera system over to our left. Cool, so let's go down here, let's close that off, and let's go down into the actual submarine. So we jump down, I'm hoping we can get some lights on very soon. Center map, map on, no, is there anything for lights, possibly? Indicator lighting, I mean, indicator lighting could help. Uh, stealth lights, okay, let's get those on. Okay, so where are we at the moment? So we're in the ops room, if we go forward, we go to the torpedo room, and you see one and two. Looks like the creators use spotlights. That's a nice way of doing it. You can see the spotlight's just over there. Very dark. Probably the RGB value on that's probably like 555 five, five, or not even like 352 or something like that. Just get this very faint lighting in here. Uh, NT star with tubes. we got open. we got fire. We've got another diving room in here. That's where we were earlier on. All right. Uh, you can, I can feel the FPS being hit a little bit by having these lights on. Uh, but it's all right. Looks like we got a map table. Yeah, okay, we can center it. We'll move it around and do a few things there. Okay, uh, carry on down. Okay, this I want to check out in a few seconds. Uh, we've got empty off tube. Okay, so there's some torpedoes here also. Oh, interesting. Uh, we do have some beds. Okay, 
We've got lower torpedo control. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so we've got a bunch of controls here, and you can see the torpedoes. Nice. All right. I mean, they've got big, big boy torpedoes. Okay, cool. We're definitely going to check that out later on, so we'll come back to that. Looks like we got fuel here. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go back up. And let's carry on. So, propulsion control. Alrighty. So, inside here, it looks like we've got a padded seat. Um, radar, which currently is not currently being used. We've got a sound room in here. Jump in the seat. Got... Okay. So, hydrophone, gain up, gain down, rotate clockwise. Alright. Let's carry on through here. It looks like we've got bow tanks. We want to ballast. We've got a helm here. Okay, so you can actually drive it from here. Interesting. We've got fill, blast, electric motors, we've got another helm, rudders and things, okay, thrust or lever, fuel pumps, engines on, and looks like we've got our engine here, which is just a modular engine, and we've got ray snorkel and coolant pumps, alright, nice, uh, looks like some equipment here also, it's nicely detailed, isn't it? I would, one suggestion I would think is, I love the, the look of the spotlights, but I know, okay, I'm obviously on a quite a a good PC, but I know that can have performance for lower end PCs, so I would maybe recommend having two systems to switch on and off. Uh, maybe you do have, but I didn't see it. Looks like you're only using spotlights through here. Uh, that's just one recommendation. All right, uh, what is this? So, raise fish. All right, jump in here. Periscope shutter. Okay, so there's our periscope. Nice. And you can see the periscope uh, just over there that we're busy doing. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go and put that down and turn it off. Uh, okay, let's test to see how this works. So apparently we need to do a few things uh, to get everything working. So we need to go to the propulsion room, which is down here. Uh, we need to set forward helm to depth hold. Okay, so that's two depth hold. There we go. That's on. Uh, turn the right key aft. Activate aft leveling system. There we go. Apparently we need that. That will stabilize us up apparently. Uh, move to the right hand helm. There we go. Okay, we're at the right hand helm. You should be able to start the engines, okay, so I'm guessing uh, fuel pumps, the engines, throttle. Do we need throttle yet? Maybe. Let's get throttle. Just to get the engines up and running. Make sure you start the electrical engines. Okay, so these are electrical engines. So this, I'm guessing, is just for our generation system. Yeah, so that's the generation system, and then if we were to... With that we should stop moving forwards yep and as you can see we are nice very smooth we should be completely stabilized at this depth and we can obviously increase that all the way through that is on that on that's on we do have ray snorkel and also coolant pumps we want to so if we go back to the helm you should see that snorkels up now and that means we can dive i think a little bit deeper uh and then i mean yeah, that's pretty much about it, I think. We got empty stern tank, fill the stern tanks, uh, fill bow tanks. I mean, we could fill the tanks if we want to. Okay. And it looks like we also have an option here to go to snorkel depth, uh, periscope depth, and uh, then we can just do death hold, of course. So if we were to go and, for example, do we have an option for okay, our bow depth here? So if I was to use my... Can I... Oh, okay, so you can see I can actually bring it down a bit. Does that actually change my depth? It does, but does it bring it back up? No, it looks like it's holding that. Okay, I was wondering about that. Uh, and then you can obviously just switch it to three. So we take depth, put that on there. So snorkel depth. So it automatically goes to snorkel depth for us. So we don't have to do anything. Just like that. I think we might want to get our engine off or a little bit down. Just having a look at, do we have any battery readout anywhere? Got fin control here, it's any speed, rudder deflection, anything with battery. So if I was to go and turn that down, fuel, actually let's just turn the engine off. RPS, temperature, anything for battery readout so we know how much battery we have. Didn't see anything. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a spare battery if we need it, and that's our main battery now, which we're currently using, if I'm correct. 
Yes, it is indeed. And we need to watch out because we're about to go under the bridge. All right. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's a very unique way of doing uh, your control using two different helms here. One for propulsion, one for obviously steering and depth and things like that. It's a different way of doing it. Uh, but I like it. I think it's pretty cool. I, like, I definitely like the options to one, two, and three. Depth hold, periscope depth, uh, surface press one now. Uh, that will automatically just bring us down to periscope depth. Which is really cool. And it takes normal depth off. And we should be going down to periscope depth in a few seconds. Uh, so I like that. I think that's a really cool little feature. Uh, I do want to test out the... I do want to test out the torpedoes and see how those work. So apparently five torpedo tubes on the ship. Four at the front uh, and one is at the back. Okay, that's interesting. Huh, that's very interesting. So I think there was something here about a torpedo tube, wasn't there? If I remember correctly. Did I see something here? Was it here? No, uh, where was it? I remember seeing something uh, about the rear one. Just don't remember where it was. Uh, anyway, we'll move on from that. Let's just go. Uh, there we go. Here's the aft one right over here. Yeah. So aft the tube, fire the tube. Okay. I want to go down. I want to see how those ones work. Do we have to go down? Because uh, there are. Yes. I think we do have to go down. And there's bilge pumps. No. Oh, no. You can fire from here. So if we go and sit here, open pour tube. You can see the levels getting filled. And here are the tubes. There's one right there. It's being filled up at the moment. There we go. And in theory, we should be able to just fire one off. There it goes. <laughs> there we go. Oh, nice. And that's actually keeping just below the waterline, which is very good. I mean, that's probably actually might even hit the bridge there. No, it just went, I think it just went past it. All right, so a lovely, lovely little submarine. I think it's really cool. I mean, performance is really good. The only thing is the, the, the lights, but I mean, everything else is really cool. I love the detailing. The light definitely does add a nice dramatic feel to this. But yeah, lovely creation. Let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next one for the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the Don Cove Resonance. This apparently is a underwater resonance or home. Uh, I mean, there's apparently there's a docking area, there's fuel, there's storage tanks, there's helipad, radio tower. I mean, there's so many things going on with this thing, and it's an add-on. So I'm very excited to check this one. So let's go and spawn in and see how it works. So spawning in the creation, we're here over at uh, just north-ish of the Isle of Donk. And you can see, yeah, I mean, this is really cool. This is probably definitely going to be like completely perfect for natural disasters. I mean, this could probably survive any natural disaster you can think of. If you guys want to check a video, try to see if this whole thing will survive not just us, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, this thing's cool. So it looks like we've got fuel tanks. We've got a helipad here. Oh, we got a dock. We've got uh, some type of... Oh, it's a nuclear container here. Okay. Looks like a radio tower of some sort. And then we've got... Looks like a elevator down to the resonance with different modules on. Okay, let, uh, I'm excited. Let's just get on. All right, so this is the nuclear power plant, if I'm correct. Yeah. So that's busy providing power for the entire base. Uh, yes, connectors on there. So it's actually an ISO connector, so you can actually get rid of it and put another one. That's very interesting. I've got a firefighting here, a little bit of detailing. Looks like we've got the elevator or shaft there. Uh, we've got fuel. All right. Yeah, so jet, diesel, and storage. Okay. So 20,000 liters of storage, you can put whatever you want inside there. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you're doing a mission or something and you don't want to lose everything, I mean, you could pump it back in there and then keep it for a while. Uh, a little header pad here with some lights and some tartan, tartan points, very useful, especially if there's a tsunami or something coming past. Uh, here's the dock. And at the dock, we do have a proper dock with rope anchors also. Nice. Okay, let's go down. Let's go and see what else we can find. So we go down. Uh, one thing I would like maybe to see is the lights turn off during daytime and at night only come on just to help with performance. Uh, what do we have in here? So it looks like we've got a bunch of equipment, uh, hazmat stuff. All right. Uh, and then we've got the elevator. So let's go down. Elevators are going down. Oh, it's so cool going on the water like that. Oh, that's nice. That is really cool. 
very, very nice. It's done a great job. Look at that! And here we are, open into our little residence. Alrighty, so it looks like we've got a little indoor garden here. Okay, we've got a little, I'm guessing like dining room area, barbecue area, okay. We've got a lounge with a kitchen and dining room possibly. And then we go to another door. Okay, so it splits out into one, two, three doors. So I mean, let's go into the first door, passageway, and then we go into what's in here. Okay, so open, so it's a toilet. Light in here? No light in here. So this light is manual, whereas all the other lights are always on. Interesting. Bathroom and flesh. No. That work? It is huh? That doesn't work. We need to have a light on. There's water. There's definitely water in there. I mean I just can't press it. That's in that I wonder if that works. Okay, well, let's turn some of these lights off. Uh, carry on through, little seating area. We've got a bedroom inside here. Lights, another bedroom I'm guessing. And you can actually see art, which is pretty cool. Nice. More lights there. Let's carry on, turn those lights off. I'm gonna go through here. Let's go through to the front area. So what is inside here? So once again, a little passageway, go through. Ooh, submarine. Oh, that's nice. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. <laughs> we're gonna come back to that. What's down here? Okay, once again, oh, we need a, we need a, a code. Hello. Um, was there anything about a code? Okay, so 1984 is the code, apparently. Let's open that up. And what's in here? So, what is all this stuff? Looks like some type of radio operation system. Oh, hello. Oh, is this the remote? Con I think this is the remote control system for the submarine. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, and then we've just got a bunch of equipment, some weapons in here if we need to, some ammo for rifles. Okay, so this is the remote control room for that submarine, if I'm correct. Uh, let's head through back to the submarine and have a look at that. All right, so lights. Got equipment around us. We've got, oh, this is really cool. Look at that. I think on the other side, not really. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. Um, so do we need to get in first? I think we need to lower it. <laughs> this ocean is right there. That is cool. So to get this in the water, I think we need to go and use the winch, but I, th I think we need to disconnect this. All right, so that's the top connectors, and then we've got the crane, which I'm guessing is that one there. All right, let's go and drop it down. Uh, I guess you can just use this to go all the way down. I mean, possibly this thing's gonna float. Because it is a submarine. Let's see. Yeah, so that's the maximum. Then I guess you can what, disconnect there and go up again. Cool. All right, and then we can go and get in the submarine and go explore. I mean, I, I think this is really cool. I think it's a great idea. I really, really think it's a great idea doing something like this. It's so cool. It's got everything that you would, everything that you would really want uh, inside here. It's done a good job, especially in Stormworks being able to do this. So yeah, lovely creation. Definitely recommend going and checking this one out. Uh, let's go ahead, let's move on to the next one for the episode. And moving on to the next creation, this time we actually have a controller in the top five. Now this controller is the multi-axle Ackerman system. Now apparently there are other Ackerman systems that I've actually seen on the workshop before. But then this one is multi-axle, so it allows you to have different axles uh, and each one of them can actually turn a different degree. Now theoretically what this does is it turns the left and right wheel at a different angle depending on which one is on the outer side, uh, allowing you to get a perfect circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the workbench, uh, try and build a quick vehicle and just test it out. All right, so we're back in the workbench and I've just got a very simple design here. As you can see, this is multi theoretically multi-axle. Uh, so we should get all of these to turn at a different angle if we were to use an Ackerman system. So let's go and grab the mic controller. Now for it, we will need it on every axle uh, that we want. We do not need it on the axle that we're considering to be the the turning point. I mean, what we can do is let's just go and put it on all four. I mean, we let's just imagine that this is the center and where we want it to turn at. Uh, what we now need to do is go into each one of these and configure it. 
So distance between wheels, I think mine is 1.75. So we're going to enter that in on all of my controllers here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is the furthest um, axle distance from the pivot point. So let's imagine that this is the pivot point, I know, here, just say just over there, for example. We can maybe do this in red so you guys can see it a little bit easier. Let's say it's over here. So we're going to use that as a, as a measurement guide right now. So we can come back in here, go to white, and let's measure it. So furthest is... 2.5 meters and I'm guessing it's the same on the other side uh, 2.75 okay so if we go in here let's do our furthest distance so 2.75 and 2.5 and we need to go into the other one too 2.5 and 2.75 so no I think we need to actually put 2.75 in all of these if I'm correct uh, and then axle distance from pivots. Uh, so now this is where we can measure the individual axle. So for example, this one is 2.75. Uh, this one is 2.5. And let's just go and check what the other ones are. So this one is 1.75 and this one is 1.5. All right, so we're gonna go here, 1.5. And oh, sorry, this one is 1.75 and this one is 1.5. This is all over on the workshop, guys. Uh, if you want to obviously check it out, it is all detailed on the workshops. So you can go and follow it. Uh, let's get everything connected now. So on the actual controllers, you can see there is steering in. So one, two, three, and four. And then there's a left and right. So right, left, left, right, left, right. And last one, left and right. I'm just gonna go double check my settings. Everything should be pretty much good and spawning in let's go and have a look at them let's see how this actually works so if we were to go jump in straight away we don't even need to move really uh if we go and turn let's do a full lock turn you can see that if i'm correct they should all be at a slightly different angle compared to the rest of them yeah look at see how the in the inner ones are turning sharper in comparison to the outer ones so to maintain the same circle when they're turning that's pretty cool I would obviously invert the ones here at the back when I'm turning, because otherwise you're turning like a crab. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually, let's go and invert those. So to invert them, I mean, we can just go here and just do simple invert block. Uh, grab that, stick it in. I'll put it, stick it over there. Go to our steering, and let's go. There we go, steering, and we'll just invert that and that. Now in theory, we should be able to do a really cool turn. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's nice. So they're at a slight, you can see once again, see the inner ones here at the front? They're at a more sharper lock comparison to the outside ones. Same on this side here at the back. You can see the ones on the outside are a little bit facing outwards more, where the inner ones are a little bit more nice and close. Look at that, we can do almost like a perfect circle there. All right, so guys, that's that's pretty much the Ackerman system. I mean, nice, the creator has done this. That's where you can just add the controller into your creation and it pretty much works, uh, which is really nice to see. I don't know if it actually provides much benefit here in Stormworks in terms of handling and stuff, um, but it's a nice little cool thing. And you know, it's another love anything mathematical that can go and enhance your creations here in Stormworks. So pretty cool creation. Let's go ahead and move on to the last one for the episode. And moving on to the last creation of the episode, we have the SS Sheldon Likes. Uh, this is a cargo passenger liner um, and is a downscaled replica of the original. Uh, what comes with it? So apparently we've got accommodation, we've got cargo hold, we've got a sink feature and radio. Uh, and also overall just a really nice looking ship. So let's go into one and see how it works. And spawning in the boat, I mean, this looks really nice. I love the just very simple, clean design of this. I mean, it's quite bulky, isn't it? Very nice. The hull looks beautiful. Look at the hull on this thing. The hull looks really nicely shaped. Yeah, that's so nice, isn't it? All right, let's go and take a little jump on it. Let's see what's going on. So it looks like we've got an anchor system, um, possibly hidden anchor system here. Um, maybe a cargo hatch here. It looks like cranes. 
All right, uh, another cargo hatch over here with some more winch systems, uh, crane systems, it looks like. Uh, we go into another cargo hatch here. Well, yes, quite a few of these. All right, and we also have a little storage room inside you with some ropes and goes down to another level. We'll check that out in a few minutes. Well, let's carry on going along. All right, so we've got a couple of entrances, so engine room and passenger rooms, carrying along the deck here. Another cargo bay, more cranes and a uh, locked door all right okay let's go i guess let's go into the cargo or engine rooms first we'll go down here carry on along and we've got light switch all right so nice little engine room very cool got some equipment here uh looks like we've got a little passageway to walk across if we want to oh that's nice i think if i'm correct so this last week in the craters yeah a little hatch there very nice uh let's carry on going across what do we have down here so we've got the engine room with some equipment on here if we need to, just some detailing and just the engines. I don't think there's anything else uh, along here. There is some hatches. It's going to avoid so if you need to do any repairs or anything like that. Uh, this is very useful to have that. Let's go and close this off. It apparently also has a sink, sink key in here. Key button, key button. Apparently, yeah, there's a sink key. Is that it there? Must be. Yes, it is indeed. So that's a sinky there. So if you do want to do some sinking ship survival stuff, uh, yeah, you could use that. All right, uh, let's go and go up, I guess. So up we go. I want to go check out those cargo hatches. So I think what we need to do is go up here, through here, and then through here. Yes, and down here. Okay, so this is the cargo hatch area on both of these. Okay, very simple, nice. I'm guessing you maybe control that from up in the bridge. Cargo management system. I uh, know, oh hold on, look, there's a there's a hatch right there. Okay, yeah, you can just open it, throw some stuff in there, and off you go. Nice. Oh, hello. Did I close that too soon? I feel like I closed that too soon. Okay, there we go. Uh, almost, almost sunk, but we're fine. <laughs> I closed all the doors, so we were fine. Don't know what happened there. Uh, cool, let's carry on through. So we've got... Some equipment here, we're going to close that door off, just in case something else happens. Uh, looks like we've got a state room in here, okay. We've got a state, another state room, we've got passenger hall. I guess that's where we're out on the deck. Uh, we've got bathroom and another bathroom, okay. Carry along along here, a little crew area, a little heater. We've got the galley in here. Oh, nice, this is like fully detailed. Some lights in there, okay, I've got the lights on, yay. Can actually see what's going on. Awesome, and then we've got a staircase that goes up. We've got some cabins in here, some cabins, more cabins, more cabins. <laughs> Let's check out a few of them. Yeah, so quite hefty cabins. Got quite a lot of crew in there, or passengers. Uh, outside, uh, we can walk along and, oh, hello. Didn't even check this out earlier. So what do we have in here? So captain's cabin in here. Main's cabin, a little crew area. And then we can go up into what I'm guessing is the bridge here. Yes, indeed. Nice. All right. Uh, I want to have a look outside first. Okay, so a little lifeboat there. Uh, winch systems. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. Okay. Throttle. Radio. Heading hold. Reverse. Spotlights. Wheelhouse light. Navigation lights. Spotlights. Ooh, deck lights. Uh, ignition for the engines. Captain's seat, throttle up. Should be moving any second, I think. I mean, I don't see the propeller moving. Maybe it's got a clutch system. Yes, it does. There we go. Slowly move out of here. We are quite close to the dock. This is nice. Performance is really good. I don't want to hit full throttle just yet, just want to get out the dock first, I'm going to slow myself down a bit. Just to mine that little area, just over there. Don't want to hit that landmass. Slow ourselves down a bit more. I think we're almost clear of it. Full throttle. And there we go. Nice, it's so smooth. Very nice. Whatever any of the winch systems and things work. Got a horn. 
guessing, I don't know, I guess the winch systems don't work. No, it doesn't look like it, does it? It's just there for aesthetics. Can't really actually use the winch system if I'm correct. I've got a heading hold here, reverse. Yeah, so I don't think you can use the winches. At least I didn't see any option to do them. Let's just go... Yeah, I don't see any option to use those winches or cranes along there. But I mean, it's really cool design. Performance is spot on. The grade has done a fantastic job with performance. Because it is just so smooth. So there's just another void area inside there. Uh, cool. And I mean, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this week's episode. We've seen some really cool creations, some very unique and unusual ones that we don't really see that often. Uh, and just some really just very good and well-designed creations, like we usually do see. As always, if you want to check out any of the creations that we had a look in the episode, I will leave them links in the video description. Go get some love out to those creators. A little work does go into these creations. Uh, so yeah. Also, major update this week with the natural disasters, so keep an eye on the channel for that. Uh, hopefully I'll give you guys some new content coming very shortly. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you don't want to miss any future content, make sure uh, you click the little bell icon to be notified as soon as it gets released. And until next week, we will see you then.